Let's talk about cerebral venous thrombosis. So this is a blood clot that happens in the cerebral vein or dural sinus. And the risk factors include prothrombotic conditions, which are the main risk factor, as well as uh, more transient risk factors, such as oral contraceptives and pregnancy, as well as malignancy, infection, and head injury. So some of the more common prothrombotic conditions that can cause the disease are factor V Leiden, protein C or S deficiency, antithrombin deficiency, the prothrombin gene mutation, and hyperhomocystinemia. In terms of clinical features, the most common one is headache, and this presents in almost 90% of patients. Uh, unfortunately, the headache is fairly nonspecific. It can be a acute presentation, such as a thunderclap headache, or it can be more chronic. Seizures are more commonly in these venous thromboses than in arterial ischemic strokes, and presents in about uh, two out of five patients. Intracranial hypertension can be a manifestation as well, and this is why in patients that are presenting with what is thought to be idiopathic intracranial hypertension, a MRV is obtained to rule out this disease. Encephalopathy can occur as well, and focal deficits can occur, which relate to the location of the venous thrombosis. Um, especially if there are focal deficits that involve multiple arterial territories, then this diagnosis can be considered. So the diagnosis is suspected based on risk factors and clinical features. And when the diagnosis is suspected, then MR venography is the best imaging study to order. So here, as you can see, uh, on the transverse sinus on this side, there's much less opacification than on this side, so that means that there could be a venous sinus thrombosis on this side. In terms of diagnosis, so screening for diagnosis for a prothrombotic disease is important if there are no known risk factors, uh, such as pregnancy, uh, or if there's a family history of cerebral venous thrombosis. So some of the labs that you can send after you diagnose the thrombosis include factor V Leiden, protein C and S, uh, antithrombin, the prothrombin gene mutation, and uh, lupus anticoagulant, anticardiolipin, and anti-beta-2 glycoprotein antibodies, uh, which are in the antiphospholipid syndrome. Uh, one important thing to note is that screening usually occurs at least two weeks after stopping anticoagulation because some of the anticoagulants can cause false positives. For example, warfarin can decrease the levels of protein C and S. In older patients, you can also screen for malignancy as a cause of the thrombosis. And in septic patients, you'll want to look for a infection with a lumbar puncture. In terms of treatment, the initial treatment is anticoagulation. Uh, low molecular weight heparin is preferred over unfractionated heparin due to a slightly better efficacy, although either can be used. Then uh, you'll bridge to an oral anticoagulant, and if the patient is pregnant, then the heparin is continued as the oral anticoagulants are usually contraindicated in pregnancy. One important concept that is commonly tested is that the anticoagulant is initiated even in the presence of an intracerebral or subarachnoid hemorrhage, as it is safe to do this. Um, other principles of management include managing the intracranial pressure. Uh, there's no difference between managing the pressures in this disease or other diseases, as well as seizure management if the patient presents with seizures. Um, and also as prophylaxis, heparin can be given in subsequent pregnancies. In terms of duration of treatment, for a provoked thrombosis, uh, such as in the pres presence of pregnancy, you'll treat for at least three months. 
for a unprovoked thrombosis where you can't find any uh, risk factors, then you'll treat for six months. If you find one of the hereditary diseases, such as factor V Leiden, then the patient will need indefinite treatment. For prognosis, about 5% of patients die at the onset of the disease due to transcentorial herniation from a large hemorrhage. Some of the risk factors that can predict death include impaired consciousness, a right-sided lesion, a posterior fossa lesion, or a deep venous thrombosis. And there is a 2-4% to 4 risk of recurrence of the disease.